Hey everyone, me Kevin here. In this video, I'm going to review exactly what the Federal Reserve discussed today at the end of their two-day policy meeting. I'm going to try to keep this as short and sweet as possible to stick to the bottom lines, and we'll go through two parts in this video. One, what the Federal Reserve said about stimulus and the markets, whether or not we should be worried about a double dip recession. Number two, what we should do about this. Quick note, this video is sponsored by Life Insurance. You can get Life Insurance and even a quote for it in as little as five minutes through an amazing company. You can Apple Pay, Android Pay for it. I just paid mine through Apple Pay. It's so easy to use and get two free stocks with Webull. You deposit $100, you get two free stocks. Now, there were three main things that Mr. Powell did, Chairman Powell. Chairman Powell first focused heavily on reminding Congress how effective the initial stimulus has been. Now, remember, technically the Federal Reserve is not supposed to be sort of a political representative. They're supposed to be an apolitical body. However, this started sounding really political. He said, we're experiencing tremendous human and economic hardship. The most important response has come from our essential healthcare workers and our essential workers in general for putting themselves at risk. And household spending looks to have recovered half of its previous decline because of the unemployment and stimulus payments which provided substantial support to the economy. Notice, even though he's supposed to be apolitical, even though he's not supposed to make political commentary, he pretty much just bagged on Congress going, yo, y'all forgetting about the heroes. You're forgetting about the essential workers. The last time you acted and you gave a proper unemployment boost and stimulus, that helped, but we're still in the uh, SHA, you know, we're still down in, in the dumps, okay? He says, at 11.1% unemployment, we're still way above historic norms and even above the peak of the Great Recession. He says the rise in joblessness was especially severe and is for lower wage earners, especially women, Hispanics, and African Americans, and that this pandemic has created massive monetary money-wise uncertainty for people. On top of that, we're not seeing a lot of inflation in the market, but the only place we are seeing inflation is in food prices because of supply chain disruption, and that hurts the people least able to bear it. The people making less than $40,000 a year, the, the women, the Hispanics, the African Americans, the lower wage earners that he was talking about. Reduced demand in travel and services has helped sort of keep a lid on inflation, especially in recent months we began to reopen. The problem, however, is that activity during this reopening has been very low, and this low demand has also kept inflation low. Contraction in the second quarter, uh, that's uh, sort of the April to June quarter, will likely be the largest contraction that we will see. Uh, but we now face new challenges. He says the number of COVID-19 cases has increased sharply since mid-June. We're now in a new phase of containing the virus. And with the new controls for containing the virus, we're going to start seeing slower growth. And that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing slower debit card and credit card data uh, that are down since late June. We're seeing labor indicators showing slower job growth, especially among small businesses. And the path forward will depend on policy to support the economy for as long as needed. More direct fiscal support may be needed. So here, Jerome Powell again is saying, look, we're doing our part. The Fed's going to keep rates at zero until we have stability. And he's talking about long-term stability too. It's not like, oh, we're doing better, let's raise rates. He thinks that this pandemic is going to have a really long tail of recovery. That is, the suffering is going to last for a long time. And the Fed is going to do its part in doing whatever it needs to do to support the economy for as long as needed. More direct fiscal support may be needed, though, he said. That was his quote. The Fed's obviously extended some of their credit facility programs through the end of the year, but the Fed also made it very clear, like, look, we can't spend money, we can only lend money. Congress has the power to spend and tax and to help businesses. And Jerome Powell fairly put, he goes, look, some businesses don't want to take on a loan to pay for payrolls this, during this time, and that other forms of support may be needed. So in other words, let's do more of the PPP. Let's do more stimulus to businesses and consumers. Let's help people with, with basically grant money to keep them afloat. Because, I mean, it's not really fair for a small business to go to the SBA and go, yep, I want to take out a loan just to survive throughout the government shutdown. Oh, great, I have to repay this in five years. Why am I even bothering working? So I got to pay taxes on my earnings, and then I got to repay a loan just to stay afloat while y'all shut me down. May as well just shut down now and not work. 
Anyway, you can kind of see the theme so far. It's almost like Jerome Powell is yelling at Congress. In questions, Steve Leisman from CNBC directly asked, should some of the lending powers be directed towards money to the people instead of lending? And this was sort of following what Jerome Powell said about, look, lending's only so good. So you see this consistent slam on Congress, but then we got into sort of the second phase and Jerome started loosening up a little bit. He started getting a little more comfortable up on his podium. He says, this pandemic represents the biggest shock we've seen. We went from the lowest unemployment in 50 years to the highest unemployment in 90 years. And there will be more from the Fed that has to be done. And there will be more that has to be done from Congress. In Congress, it seems like both sides are wrangling and there will especially need to be help for people to be able to stay in their houses or rental homes. Let's break that apart really quick. Very, very obvious here. He's saying, Congress, like y'all doing all this infighting stuff, let's help the people. This is a no brainer. We need to help people stay in their houses. We need to help people pay their bills. We need to help people pay their rent. He said, uh, and, and, and this is good. I mean, this is a direct hit towards Congress about, you know, the eviction protections, right? Anyway, he says, burdens have fallen on everyone, but they're being borne most heavily by people making under $40,000. And if you were making under $40,000, you had a 40% greater chance of losing your job. The service, retail, and hospitality in the sectors have obviously been hit the worst. And inequality has been a long time issue in America, and it's only getting worse because of this pandemic. Inequality is caused by things like the flattening pay for people with low skills. This is why it's so important when it comes time to increasing your income. You ask yourself, how can I increase my income? What can I do? What can I do? What can I learn? What side hustle can I do now that's going to make me more money in the long run? Number two, social mobility for people is being reduced, especially during this pandemic. That is, the poor are staying poor. And technological disruptions are making it even harder to get ahead now. Like you have to learn more than you did in the past just to get ahead now. Then Chairman Powell was asked if we were at the start of the double dip recession. Is the recession stalling? Are we running out of steam? And he said, hey, look, you know, we had a good run up in May and June. Obviously it was still slower than normal, but we had a pickup but now we're starting to see a slowing again. He did say it's too early to tell, but he did not rule out the possibility of a double dip crash and instead insisted that Congress and the Fed do more to prevent exactly that. The only sectors he says are strong right now are housing and motor vehicle sales, which by the way, I'm adding Winnebago, the RV company to our 1337 pie. We'll talk more about that in just a moment when I talk to you about stocks. Towards the end, Mr. Powell again reiterated that what Congress did is really helping now. So what Congress did in March is really helping now. And it's going to, quote, stand up to scrutiny in the years to come, but very likely more will be needed from all of us. I think the new stimulus package is a good thing. He said all that. All right, so what do we do now? We know Mr. Powell is pushing for more stimulus. This is so freaking obvious. And he's also an economist and most economists support the $600 boost. Most economists support stimulus checks and most economists support larger spending now and then worry about paying off the debt later when the economy is stable and the pandemic is over. Well, what do we do? In my opinion, there are three things we should focus on right now. Number one, grow your income as much as possible. Folks, the harder you work, the more you make if you're in a field where you could actually make more money. If you're driving a forklift, if you're driving Uber, if you're driving Lyft, if you're working in a restaurant, and I've done a lot of these things. I drove taxi, I worked at Red Robin, I made smoothies, I folded jeans at Hollister. I've done all this stuff. I realized no matter how hard I worked my butt off because I knew I'm a hard worker. Like, why am I not getting paid more? Why did I only get a 10 cent raise? Why, like this sucks, it's not fair. I knew that the only way for me to make more money was to do a different skill where there was no ceiling. That's why I got into doing real estate sales. That's why I got into 3D Matterport scanning. That's why I got into YouTube. That's why I got into investing. These are the skills that can make you money and the harder you work, the more you get paid. Uh, check out a video that I just released on sort of my uh, channel earnings over the last uh, two and a half years on YouTube. And you can kind of hopefully get some inspiration from that. Again, I'm only sharing that uh, mostly because I, I want you to get inspired. 
Uh, part of me uh, wants to be transparent as well, but then there is another part of me that's like this, like this is probably not a good time to talk about money, but then again, maybe it's the best time to talk about money because we're in a pandemic. Number two, invest whatever cash that you have. In my opinion, unless you're retiring in the next three to five years, folks, invest, 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 invest. The more focused you are in investing, the less psychologically likely you are to spend that money. I talk about the psychology of money in my Money and Stocks program linked below. It's next to the real estate investing course, the management course, the real estate agent course. The Money and Stocks course will teach you my psychology for money, how I always place money into investments and I use that as my emergency fund. I don't leave cash sitting around. Now, obviously only do this if you're not about to retire. I personally recommend if you have not started investing yet, start with like a wealth front index fund, something like an index fund of index funds. If you don't want to use wealth front, then use something like uh, metkevin.com slash basket. So that way you kind of get like my favorite picks of index funds and my allocations for index funds that I like. If you don't wanna use index funds and you just wanna pick your favorite stocks, I have a really easy way for you to get started. All these things are totally free. Go to metkevin.com slash 1337v3. I am now updating the 1337 index to version three to provide you uh, some adjustments. I've, in, if, for example, I included Winnebago for RV sales. I've reduced some exposure to certain recovery stocks in JP Morgan. I increased Google and Etsy slightly, and I made some other minor adjustments. They're barely different, but there are some good adjustments in this that I think you'll like. Anyway, go to metkevin.com, not me, Kevin, metkevin.com slash 1337v3. This is not me managing your money. This is just a suggestion. And if you lose money, it's not my fault. It's, it's what you do with it. Maybe one day in the future, I can help you invest your money into real estate. In fact, I'm already starting to collect emails. There is a link down below. Uh, you could click on the link down below, invest with Kevin and Cashflow. I think it's metkevin.com slash cashflow. And uh, you could drop your email in there. It's not a mailing list. It's just so that you get updated when that time comes. Number three, do whatever you can to get pre-approved and buy a house below market value. Don't buy move-in ready crap. Don't buy turnkey stuff. If you wanna learn about building wealth in real estate, watch my real estate playlist on this channel. Check out the real estate investing course. Buy stuff that you can add value to and build your wealth with. That's the most important thing to focus on in real estate, unless you're buying units. If you're buying units, it's usually more okay to get something that's more move and ready, but the rents have to be below market value. A lot to talk about in real estate. That's why I have a really in detail a program on real estate investing. And again, obviously you could start with the playlist on my channel for investing in real estate. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Folks, we will see you next time.